With interest rates being as high as they are and the price of homes in some of the major cities across Canada, investors are looking to put their money elsewhere. But outside of some of the big name cities like Vancouver and Toronto, where should you be investing your money? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be covering the top five places that you should be investing your money here in Canada. So stay tuned. What's going on guys? Alex Dunbar here, local realtor based out of the Lower Mainland. And on this channel, I make videos just like this one, talking about the BC and Canadian real estate market, as well as showcasing community tours across the Lower Mainland. So if that's something you're interested in seeing more of, I suggest you consider subscribing to our channel. And after you get a chance to fully watch this video, I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you agree with the picks or not? And where would you decide to invest? But with that, let's dive right into it. So I'm gonna be reviewing this article from Western Investor talking about the top five towns for real estate investors in 2024. Now I'm not 100% sure they haven't made it clear whether this is just Western Canada. I kind of have a feeling it is based on the cities that are chosen, but you'll have to let me know what your thoughts are afterwards. So they do this every year and they pick their top five spots to invest. So let's get into it and we're gonna start with number five. So starting us off at number five, it is Lethbridge, Alberta. So they say it does not have a deep oil and gas industry that has proven a strength in recent years as it had the space and the low prices to attract MAGRA agri players such as McCain Foods, Cavendish Farms, Pip International, which are all building and expanding processing in the community with 2,400 acres of industrial land with the city boundaries and 934 acres available for redevelopment. The city is positioned well for growth. One can buy a home in Lethbridge for less than 340,000. You can't even get a one bed condo in my market for this price point. You're lucky to find anything at 400,000 to be completely honest with you. And a one bedroom apartment rents on average average for $12. $100. The combination of high job growth, low housing costs, and projected population growth of 5% will lead to a retail boom in 2024, Avison Young says. Retail real estate in Lethbridge has had sustained growth since 2020 with no signs of slowing down, says Jeremy Roden, executive vice president of Avison Young Lethbridge. So at number five, we have Lethbridge, Alberta. Moving on, number four, we've got Saskatoon. So Saskatoon makes our list for 2024 for its steady demand, affordable prices, and potential returns in retail, multifamily, and industrial real estate. Saskatchewan will post 2% GDP growth in 2024 among the leading provinces during a muted year, according to Conference Board of Canada. The board notes strength in agriculture and mining, right on cue, the 7.5 billion BHP Janssen mine, biggest potash mine on earth, has started north of Saskatoon with a promise of 2,500 jobs. Now, the only thing that I like to warn people about being careful in these sorts of markets where they only have a single industry is you're not very diversified. If this mine is to shut down you can very easily have high levels of vacancy if all of these jobs vacate however i don't know enough to speak on the saskatoon market itself but just something to keep in mind the mine will push demand in saskatoon's industrial sector which has the third lowest vacancy rate 1.6 percent in canada which is extremely low while rising demand could drive new space to a record high $15 per square foot in 2024, Collier's forecast. Now, of course, third lowest vacancy rate, that's something that we do like to see, of course. Vacancy rates are super important, so you've got two things kind of going against each other here, but Saskatchewan's largest city with 300,000 residents, Saskatoon, has high household incomes, yet the average home price is $378,800, among Canada's lowest. And one bedroom rents for a comparatively low $1,075. The city is home to the University of Saskatchewan, Good thing for rents and one of Canada's most prominent biotechnology research centers so it does sound like they have a couple of different industries so you get a bit of diversification but again that is just a generalized point and if I can remember correctly Saskatchewan was one of the best in terms of affordability in comparison to other cities where their actual median household income was higher than some of these other cities such as Vancouver or Toronto don't quote me on that but Regardless, they were very, very close, if not greater. Moving on to number three, we've got South Delta, BC. This one kind of surprised me, to be honest, but South Delta is the two towns of Tawasson and Ladner in an area of intense development and investment starting in 2024. This September, the $3.5 billion Roberts Bank terminal expansion was given a green light by BC's Ministers of Environment and Transportation. The massive project doubles the footprint and current Delta port terminal and will increase the overall container capacity 
capacity on the coast by 30%. Meanwhile, work also begins in 2024 on the new George Massey Tunnel. So this will be a big project, a 4.15 billion eight lane toll-free immersed tube tunnel under the Fraser River linking South Delta to Richmond. This is huge for any residents who are already living here. This is something that we've been asking for for a long period of time. But good news is this is going to probably bring more workers to the area, which should continue to decrease the levels of vacancy and just improve infrastructure in general. Now, something I want to note here is that the majority of the properties or a lot of the properties, especially new ones coming to market in Swanson and Ladner are leasehold property. Now, if you don't understand that or know what it means, these prices could come off as very attractive to you upon first glance, but leasehold to very, very briefly summarize is you don't own the land that you're living on. You own the structure on top of the land, but you do not own the land like freehold. So I'm not going to get into it here, but just something to keep in mind. I have another video that covers all things to do with leasehold. So I'll put that in the description for you to watch afterwards, but just something to keep in mind. Despite huge investments, Sean Hodgins, president of Century Group, who is developing the mixed use Southlands project in Swanson and planning to redevelop Swanson Mall into a retail and residential high rise complex to the two factors or South Delta success are simply good schools and public safety. This is something that is definitely known for and something they will hopefully continue to be known for, but is obviously something that has drawn people to the area, specifically more so end users will be interesting to see what it looks like in terms of renters. However, moving on to number two, we have Terrace BC. So, so Terrace is a 30 minute drive from Kitimat where 40 billion in liquefied natural gas terminal will complete in 2024 as the biggest resource project in Canadian history. This is massive. And Terrace is where the regional residents shop and live opening opportunities for retail and residential real estate. So quick point here, Terrace is the only livable community within commuting distance to Kitimat says realtor in Vancouver. Terrace's population is expected to double over the next five years as billions of dollars in redevelopment, including a new surgical hospital schools and industrial projects transform the area. So this is a big thing to keep in mind is of course supply and demand. If we are having a ton of people moving into the area, there is gonna be a massive influx of demand. Now, are all these people gonna stay here or are they just looking for a place to live? During this period of time, maybe they're working on this project. Either way, it's going to increase demand of both both home prices and rents. So I can see why they believe that it would be a great place to invest your money. Yelizarov is working with Swiss Real on a 21 unit detached house subdivision aimed at investors where the new four bedroom houses sell for $675,000. Now guaranteed corporate rent for two years at 6,000 per month with renewal options. Half the development is sold. So this is obviously attractive knowing that you're gonna have tenants and knowing exactly what the fees for that are gonna be versus being unsure, having vacant properties, especially with this guaranteed corporate rent. So that that is something that is nice, gives you a bit more certainty. Terrace bucked a trend of declining housing prices in the north this year with average prices increasing to over 500,000 just behind Prince George, the largest northern city, according to the Northern BC Real Estate Board. So interesting to hear about this one and all the things that are going on there. Sounds like they are expanding. Again, not something I can personally comment on too much, but if you do know a little bit more, don't hesitate to leave a comment and let us know why you think it is a good or bad investment. And moving on to number one in this year's list of top five places to invest in Canada or potentially Western Canada, it's Edmonton. And regardless of what you think about Edmonton in terms of living there, we're talking about it from an investment perspective. So just keep that in mind. So Edmonton was named the most affordable city in Canada for renters in a national survey this year. And it has among the lowest and the most stable housing prices in the country, according to the Canadian Real Estate Association. In Alberta's capital city, the average one bedroom rent is $1,130. Unchanged this year, surprisingly, the average September home price was just over three which is 3.8% less than a year earlier and 57% below the national average. So personally in my market where prices went up between four to 6% on average to see a 4% loss, not surprising based on how the market was last year. I'm actually surprised that our market ended up where it was, but interesting nonetheless. For pragmatic commercial investors, Edmonton means opportunity, especially for multifamily investors. The average apartment building sells for 134,000 per door. 134,000, that is insane. As I already mentioned, I'm not even in Vancouver itself and to get 
a one bed, you're looking probably between 450 to 500,000. 450 being something that's maybe more average. 500,000 is gonna be a pretty nice one bed, but that is phenomenal value. Now, Avis and Young, which notes, record levels of immigration are now driving apartment demand, which has suppressed the vacancy rate to a seven year low. Again, something you wanna look for is this vacancy rate and the immigration that is coming in to the city. So increased demand and not sure about the supply. However, it seems like realistically in almost everywhere across Canada, the supply cannot keep up with the demand. And I feel it's probably no different here in Edmonton. Multifamily capitalization rates average a healthy 5%, so 5% cap rate. That is more than you're typically getting in a lot of the other more expensive cities for sure. Meanwhile, Edmonton's industrial market saw positive absorption for 12 straight quarters with no signs of a slowdown with a vacancy rate of 4.3%, 2 million square feet construction and average lease rates, the second lowest in Canada at $10.57 per square foot. Industrial investors from Vancouver, Calgary, and Toronto will be turning to affordable, accessible Edmonton in 2024. So they are also touching on the industrial and commercial markets. My focus is primarily on residential markets, but something interesting to note for sure. However, in a previous video, I touch on the fact that in different cities across Canada, the affordability in terms of comparing median household income to the average home price, Edmonton is the only one that is actually at par or basically exactly even. You look at places like Vancouver or Toronto and those numbers are way overblown, significantly over what that is, but they are equity driven markets. There is a ton of money being passed down generational wealth from parents or grandparents down the family in order to help their kids or their kids kids actually get into the market or get into the next property type but not everybody has that convenience or luxury so when we're looking at places like Edmonton where you can actually get in without having a significant chunk of capital it looks very attractive especially for those who are looking to invest but don't necessarily have the capital required to invest in some of the other bigger markets Markets. So there you have it. There is Western Investors top five picks for choices of places to invest in Canada or potentially Western Canada in 2024. So while I'm not super familiar with all of the real estate markets that were mentioned in this video, the few that I have looked into, I do think they're onto something. However, if there are any numbers behind their predictions, I would love to see exactly what they're thinking. But from a broader level, I think a lot of it definitely makes sense. However, of course, when it comes to any sort of investment, you can make money more than one way. For instance, are they just solely looking at what the cash flow is? Are they taking into consideration the appreciation? Are they just looking at the cap rate? My assumption is that they are kind of taking all of these into account, but they definitely at least have a focus on cash flow to start, but also looking at where the potential growth could be as well. And if you yourself are thinking about making an investment this year, I'm based out of the Surrey and Langley real estate markets here in BC. So if you wanna chat about your current situation and what your potential options are, you can scroll down and click the first link in the description to book a call with me at a time that works best for you. And even if you're interested in investing outside of my market, I have tons of valuable contacts that I can put you in touch with. So just reach out and I'd be happy to do so. And if you did get any sort of value whatsoever from today's video, all I ask is that you hit the thumbs up button so the algorithm will push it out to more amazing individuals just like yourself who want to learn more about real estate. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out another video on our channel before you get out of here and we'll see you in the next video.